Now, this thing that Jesus disapproves of, that makes a man earn a name hypocrite in the sight of God, is one of the things we celebrate in ministry today. Now, many people go to the synagogue and, uh, okay, maybe he, he has gathered widows, 500 widows, and then comes with a camera. Then they will now view um, a check of, of 50,000. And then most people that are not discerning, most people that do not understand how the ministry of mercy is administered effectively, adequately, according to the prescription of Jesus, will say, wow, this is a man of God. He has such a heart of mercy and love. <laughs> according to God, God doesn't want your act of mercy to be a basis by which you score cheap publicity. Because God is concerned about the self-esteem of the person that you are helping. So if I now bring somebody out, now Pastor Tony, I now bring him out on the screen, and now say, well, here's a poor guy, you know, and I'm trying to stand in the gap to make sure that funds are made available to um, take care of his academic intentions. Uh, we heard he had a scholarship to Oxford, and we, knowing that he's an orphan, we are trying to ensure my company is trying to ensure that we make available the resources so that he will be able to compete with um, every other person that he meets in the educational space. I've used him to paint myself white. God is interested in the self-esteem of that person that we claim to be helping. If in the process of trying to administer the help, we are stamping or standing on the person's self-esteem, we have missed that ministry. What we are doing is no longer the ministry of mercy. It is, is the oppression of hypocrites. What we are doing is that we are sounding a trumpet. You see, there's a thin line. There's a thin line between many of these things. And that's why for every item in the ministry, ministry of the believer, there is a regulation attached. That regulation is what enables you to stay within the framework of God's approval. If you wander outside of God's approval, uh, God's reward is no longer applicable to you. Now, so many people get to do that. Uh, we have 50 bags of rice. We have a warehouse of supplies. And then maybe I will now come and my wife, me and my wife, will now stand and then take, take a picture. I say, wow. Now, there are strict... You will never hear that I supported any vulnerable person. And the reason is because I saw it in the Bible. He said, when you are going on this kind of a mission, let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. It means keep the cameras at home if you want to do the ministry of mercy because God wants to be seen as the one that is at work through you reaching out to that person right and if God the way God has answered your prayers he didn't take your issues to the market especially even in areas where we failed him and we asked him for mercy and God now came to administer mercy he, 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 he kept your dealings with him secret with him he didn't make it popular he didn't make it public because God is concerned about your self-esteem. He's com concerned about your, your self-confidence. We see a wicked thing in our generation where people will want to trample on everybody's self-esteem just to make a name. And people that are not discerning will call it the work of God. Little wonder the platform where such hypocrites operate. The first, what's the first platform? It's called synagogue. And I'm not the one that wrote it in the Bible. I don't know. But I believe that the Bible is overly prophetic. Every strand of it is prophetic. Synagogue platform. And this is this. If you don't have the capacity to be able to administer mercy without showing it to the world, it means you are not deep. You are shallow. You are somebody looking for the approval of the public, not the approval of God. I want you to be very careful. Anybody that is so quick to make such a presentation might not be deep enough. That's my own. It might not be deep enough because there are several things that must be kept secret. If, you, if my heart that is beating now comes out and begins to beat outside, you will know there is a problem. Not, not everything that is functional is supposed to be on display. And one of the things that need to be critically hidden because of the delicate nature of, uh, of, 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 of its administration is the ministry of mercy. May the Lord give us the maturity to be able to administer mercy in such a way that we, are, we will become eligible to a reward. The reason why God is going to reward one that works in mercy because nobody knows 
it is not on display so god who sees in secret will now be the one that will occasion a reward and when he rewards you he won't do it in secret he will do it openly that's the secret about mercy don't when you are preaching leave it out of your preaching manual say, oh we went there and we saw there was affliction everybody was uh, was a victim of the situation and we decided to roll out the bowels of mercy what you are doing there is the work of a hypocrite you are advertising something that should be kept secret you see the, the, the bible is so sensitive it is a wonderful practice and procedure guide such that if you want to be accurate there is enough evidences in scripture as to what you need to put in place in order for you to be accurate in ministry accurate in life accurate in engaging god accurate in delivering things that you receive from god the nature of mercy is so sensitive it will take the mature people that are, are, are secure in themselves those are the ones that have the capacity to be able to do things in secret and they don't want anyone whatsoever to be aware that it was done because they did it in the sight of the Lord and they look to the Lord to reward them. I think we have captured the issue of mercy. So if we are talking about the ministry of mercy, we are giving to people that are vulnerable. And there's a list of the vulnerable in the scripture, the stranger, the orphan, the widow. And that list is not exhaustive. There are still other other sub lists you can find somebody that has his two parents intact but um, there is so much poverty that the person may not be able to see himself through school uh, the minister of mercy can also come in those so the list is not exhaustive it's a list of people that are vulnerable now the ministry of giving is different from the ministry of mercy are you with me there are people believers some people listening to me online now the only calling you have the primary calling you have is in the area of the ministry of giving and i need to tell you about giving yes there is a level to which every member of the body of christ is supposed to be responsible to the church of the living god in terms of giving all right but there are some people that have a ministry in that area our responsibility to a certain apostolic community in terms of giving is not the same as the ministry of giving are you with me for instance when we talk about tithing just like i said yesterday it's not tithing is not giving tithing is giving god is due it's not part of what we call giving it is what we call honor you know the bible says honor the lord with your substance so the first idea of giving is within the context of honor in the bible honor the lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy prestige shall burst forth with new wine honor in honoring god we give god what is due to him if you are using electricity you are going to pay bills that's true all right so if we are in god's living community we have to honor him by paying tithes and when you pay tithes that's the ordinary level requirement all level you know before you go into university you must have all level requirements all level that's what tithing is the ministry of giving is not for people that have not passed the old level requirement because that old level requirement is suggestive of the fact that i'm ready now i'm ready for the government of your lordship to take to do all that consecration means for me it's when you have passed that basic requirement that the demands of consecration will come to you and since you don't own anything and in in marriage there are no property rights and you are married to jesus so you cannot claim property have you ever seen a household where because i've seen it the wife wrote her name on the tv and that means this one is my own <laughs> if you look at the iron very well you see the wife's name precious it means this iron is my own it's very funny when we begin to do property rights in what what is expected is consecration do you understand that okay so when you begin to pay your tithe effectively it means that you are reasonable so at that point god can now begin to push you into the ministry of giving gradually and the ministry of giving is a proof of your consecration that you don't own property i i'm seeing some people's face in the parliament changing so let me stop that's why i say i won't go beyond what you can take when i when i see faces change i just say all right no problem but these are the these things i'm teaching are the things i've worked in for many years and i give you my um testimony of um the recent instructions god gave me. if god is not instructing you to give 
it means your life is going to be on one spot for a very long time and you you are likely not going to be seeing supernatural things in terms of favor in terms of open doors in terms of miracle happenings things you cannot explain that is just overwhelming your life because the principle and the the lifeline of every giver is that give and what it shall be given unto you when you begin to operate with the ministry of giving that lifeline is open to you i can't i can't exhaust testimonies of supernatural things that have come into my life because of subscription if you if you begin to operate the way i'm saying and you pass the old life requirement and you come into the arena of giving are you with me then you will know that consecrating surrendering all is not surrendering all to tyranny but it is surrendering all to the mercy of god it's not a risk it's an advantage the flesh will look at it at just get used to it and then the flesh will give way if you go beyond the flesh and you obey god once and you see the effect of that obedience it will be easy for you to continue in the journey you will know it is a secret that only them that are ready to die to possession can enter into are you still with me there is an anointing that is going to be deposited upon your life that will attract things into your life and this experience i'm saying is only give us that we ever know it and that's why when we maybe there's a need and we need to raise money in an emergency we always say if you don't understand the ministry of giving don't participate because it will be difficult for you not to see us as fraudsters trying to extort money from you so if you don't have the understanding hold on hallelujah hold on i was i was um, a very faithful tighter for a very long time i don't know for how many years i think i started tightening faithfully from 1994 how many years is that now huh? 26 years yes i started tightening faithfully from 1994 and that was the year i left uh i finished yeah i think that was the year i finished secondary school so after secondary school i started working as a teacher started earning salary so i now started tightening from that time not a tight because our, our pastor taught it and then we began to tight and and for the first years of my tightening there was no result there was no god was still testing our faithfulness until you come to that point where it is registered upon your heart that this is my duty when it is registered as duty upon your heart it's not as if you are doing a high thing you are just doing the what you need to do is your duty it's as if you are paying a bill or paying for gas or paying for you know it's my duty i'm supposed to do this if i don't do this i violated there is something in the community that i'll be excluded from if i don't do this and meanwhile i've, I've defaulted before and i saw the consequence like this ministry tithes this ministry tithes the only time in our since our existence that we now lacked money i just went to the treasurer and sacked him i said you have tell me the truth the tight channel you have blocked it he said yeah, we're trying to you are sacked and may the lord guide your ways and all that is in your possession should be delivered to this woman she will take over from your duty and i want her with my eyes open like this if by any means you fail in this she couldn't sleep because of she had never seen my eyes that that big before so she had to come to my house early in the morning to come and say i say i say okay calm down sorry sorry now this is the thing it's a lifeline it must be flowing so she has kept it since that time we have never had financial luck hallelujah and yeah, so I, I was faithful in titan until in the year in the year 2000 because i was married there 2008 no 2009 we were praying like this in the house and then god now spoke to me he said give me a hundred thousand every month then my salary was three hundred and thirty thousand he said give me a hundred thousand every month i touched my wife because what that means is that nobody in the house should fall sick what that means is that our car should never have any challenge huh? what that means also is that nepa the nepa people should not ask for their money in my own eyes it was impossible so i now called my wife and said um this is what the lord is saying she said let's obey now say ah, just like that she now said something one wisdom i don't know where she got that wisdom from she said the devil will never ask you to do two things he'll never ask you to win a soul i say yeah i'm sure of that and the devil will also never ask you to give money to god hi <laughs> that means <laughs> that means what i heard is from god <laughs> 
So we now said, all right. Do you know that when we are accepted as a family, all right. I said, okay, how are we going to be eating? She said, no, food is a variable. That there are some soup, that are, there are 5,000 some soup, uh, 500 naira. <laughs> I said, all right, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we had people that were on scholarship that we were paying for and so many things that, and we couldn't stop doing that. So if you're saying we're removing a hundred thousand, we are on red. That is eternal red. You know what happened? We had the end of the month had not yet reached for us to start the one hundred thousand seed. Huh? That we accepted the loan. My promotion that was held for four years came out in June. They don't promote people in June, they promote only in January. My name appeared on the board in Abuja. Promotion. They backdated that promotion for four years. They paid me all the salary, all the allowances, everything in between four years. Just because I accepted. Because if you enter into the ministry of giving, then give and it shall be. What? It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful. I've worked in that thing till today. I worked in that 100,000 thing until 100,000 became my tithe. So the meaning is that I should top it. You understand now? Because 100,000 is the seed, not the thing. I grew. My promotions all came. I mean, strange promotion that I promote nine. I'm there. Promote four. I'm there. Promote. This was me that even with fasting, I, they will not promote me. We are doing the job, but they won't promote me. Promote girlfriend, promote all these kind of people. And then we are in the field, dying, inhaling chemicals. Giving changed my fortunes. What I am today, I am because of the ministry of giving. I've been faithful in the ministry of giving. Some of you are still struggling with tithing. God is not considering you serious yet until you have fulfilled all level requirement. And you would have done it for a while before you say, okay, he'll give you a giving instruction. So it starts with the ministry of honor, which is tithing. That one is not giving. That one is God's due. Giving is beyond that. So it's every month. We've been faithful. So before our first opportunity to give, my status had changed financially. So all of those things I raised, NEPA bill, I, I had more than enough to take care of those issues. And the money the government saved for me, in that they didn't promote me for four years, and then they now promoted me, was the reason why I could build a house that you know. So government saved for me. And uh, at the right time, when I needed an accommodation, through giving, through accepting to give, they released it, and, and it was converted into a house. God, Jesus knows the way through the wilderness. Um, may the Lord give you understanding. I don't want to press beyond this. I don't want to press beyond this. So when, when there is an emergency and there is a need for, for people to give and we make it open, if we are going to make it open, it means that in, in the closet people have given and we didn't reach the mark. That's why we are coming to announce it. It's not for everybody. It's for people that understand what we are talking about. May the Lord help us in Jesus' mighty name. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Now, as we are doing this study, at some point you will find you will connect with one of these ministries. The reason is because you have that ministry and it is expected for you to begin to develop it and to begin to make it excellent, begin to make it effectual because if God gives you a ministry, that is going to determine how you'll be judged before the, um, the white throne judgment. It's in keeping. There are, two, there are two lines of judgment that will come from that throne. Your spiritual life, how you have maintained it, and also your, your calling, your calling, your ministry, your ministry. Um, where are we? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Uh, technical people, do you have an, um, New King James Version? Because New King James Version seems to render it more adequately and god has appointed this in the church first apostles second prophets third teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps comma what administrations administrations these guys these guys are, are spiritually endowed i would like to say something here quickly i'd like to say something here quickly that spiritual things spiritual things need a spiritual type of administration to bring order to them let me try again. Spiritual things requires a spiritual type of administration to bring order to them. What do I mean by this? Can we do First Chronicles chapter 15? First Chronicles chapter 15. Spiritual things require 
First Chronicles 15 from verse 11 to verse 13. First Chronicles 15 from verse 11 to verse 13. And David called for Zadok and Abiata the priests, for the Levites, and for the Levites, for Uriel, and Asia, Joel, Shamir, and Eliel, and Aminadab. Go on. And said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourself, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. Next verse there. Because ye did it not at the first, and the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for we sought him not after the due order. Now, I'd like you to understand, underline the due order. There was a prescribed way of transporting the ark as recommended by God. And the prescribed way of transporting the ark was that the ark was supposed to be held on the shoulders of four priests. And that's why we have four gospels. Because the ark was to be held on the shoulders of four priests. And that's how it was supposed to be transported. But it came to pass that when the Philistines were transporting the ark back to Israel, they used a new technology. They put the ark in a new cart. And then the, the, the oxen now dragged the ark into the borders of Israel. It was expected that if the ark was going to be transported from that point, that they, they, will, they, should, they should change to the way it was prescribed. But David went and brought people, musicians, and they did not know that there was something there that was inconsistent with the order. And in the process, you know what happened? Uzzah shed forth his hand and the Lord killed him. The Lord made a breach because he was not sought after the due order. There is a due order. There is a due administration. There is a due protocol. There is a due process that is involved in spiritual things. And this functionary, the administrator, happens to have the anointing that gives him the insight into how to administer such things. I want to say this quickly before um, I read what is on my notes. Ministry is a spiritual thing that survives on an administration. Ministry is not an administration. Ministry is a spiritual thing, but it needs an administration to survive. And there is a battle. The battle that we have is you can administer everything and the Holy Ghost will be out of it. Because I've seen many ministries that started with great revivals. They have ended up with a tight administration. All they have is administration. The spiritual thing that was being administered is no longer present. There is a, a, there is a, a challenge of over-administrating the thing such that the spiritual thing for which the administration was built dies. There is also a temptation of operating in the other extreme of having no administration at all. And the spiritual thing will not be packaged enough for people to be able to design God in it. And because of that, it will earn a bad reputation and it will also die. So there must be a delicate balance that is established in this regard. And the spiritual thing which ministry is must be allowed to rest on an administration that doesn't choke its life. It's a very delicate situation. And because of this, God raises men that have a peculiar gift of administration they can see what needs to be added to trap the dimensions of the spirit down now let me give you an example um in a certain church that church um, seemed not to believe in the holy spirit in terms of speaking in tongues and then one or two of their youths now go to the university join fellowships get baptized in the holy ghost and when they came back home they felt a burden to expose other brethren to what they had contacted and when they fasted and prayed and the first meeting they came for two brothers came for uh, and the youth the youth of the church gathered in mass in the midst of the prayers the holy ghost broke out broke out massively and people began to speak in tongues and the sound was so high that some of the people that were in the vestry in the ministry area some ministers some clergy people i guess they were having a meeting they heard the strange sound that came from the hall the pool and they ran to people to check what? what is it? And the manifestation they saw was not consistent with what they designed in Bible school. So they felt that devils have a hand in this. And they were under pressure to bring a form of administration. Because the administration was brought in the flesh, the spiritual thing that came along died. Now, the ministry of administration is a very delicate ministry that sits on the altar of discernment. Let me unveil what it is. 
Number one, this administration, you say they have the needed insight and discernment to bring order to the move of God without obstructing the intensity of the move. They have the needed insight and discernment to bring order to the move of God without obstructing the intensity of the move. Number two, I hope you know what number one means. There's an order. There's a divine order. There's a divine order. Hallelujah. You see, if there's a divine order in a certain ministry of multi-gifted people, and there's a divine order that is set up, you will see the beauty of the combination of offices. You will see the beauty of the combination of ministries. You will see the beauty of talents, of skills being weaved together. And in such a situation, it will be easy for any believer that subscribes to such a fellowship to find his destiny. It will be very easy. Because the spiritual resources were adequately harnessed through administration it will be very easy for brethren to find their destiny and the, the third piece is prayer your your ministry has, is as strong as your private life if you don't have a very strong private life your ministry will be weak your ministry is going to be weak if you don't have a strong private life if you can do seven hours of prayer five hours of prayer four hours of prayer just to preach for a few minutes and the back end of that your preaching engagement it has its roots in four hours of, of rolling before God, expressing how insufficient you are so that God can fill your vessel. Prayer. That's the back end of your pressure. And that's the third P. Then partnerships is the fourth P. Because if only you can fulfill your purpose, it's not a purpose. So there are people that are called, people that are ordained by God, that God is going to send into your allotment in order for you to manage them. Because I've seen people before uh, that when people rise in their congregation, they are, oh, they, are, they become insecure. You can't manage destiny. You can't manage destiny. Those people will have to go because they don't have a future with you. Partnerships will begin to come. Now, one of the things that will suggest to you that you have entered into a new season in ministry is that you begin to have new partnerships. You begin to align with new people that were not in your space before. That's a sign. That's a sign. So when, when, when several people, strategic people begin to come into your space, come into your life, it's an indication of a prophetic time. When God was telling me about ministry to Makodi, ministry to Makodi, it was when he was saying it that he showed me this damsel. This damsel was hidden. She was my friend, but there was no connection. The connection came consistent with a certain time. And the manifestation of that daughter of Zion that was deployed to accompany um, a missionary into a certain region was an indication of a certain prophetic time in the calendar of God. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.